Hi Shed Hackers, today we're going to be making a little tugboat, very small one. Um, I suppose you're making one in the shed, you could probably make one in less than an hour. Okay, so we'll take for all the stages. It's a nice little project and you learn some basic skills. Okay, to start with, um, Jake's going to scan across some of the tools we'll be using. And we've got a G, G, a G clamp, a ruler, um, pencil, a template marker for holes, compass, a mini tri-square, a chisel, bevel edged, large and small. I think that's about a 25mm 20, and a 10mm. Tenon saw, bench hook, and that is mainly it. Possibly some glass paper, or sandpaper you might know it as. Um, and a piece of pine wood, about um, 150 millimeters long. Okay. Hi Shady Hackers, back to the mini boat project. Um, we also are using a block plane, really handy little tool there. And you can buy these relatively cheap. Um, some are about 15 pounds, but they go right up to hundreds of pounds, some of them. But the, you can buy a real basic one for about 15, 20 pounds. Really good for um, smoothing off the work, and we'd, we'll go into that in a minute. Okay, so the first um, part, I'm just gonna show Jake what we've started to do. We start off in all our projects, like the Desk Tidy project, you can see, in YouTube and our mini train project. We start all our projects with a decent design and the design really helps us understand what we're going to make. And it shows in that case, the top view and the side elevation or side view. Interestingly, Shed Hackers, um, we've got a book here that we use sometimes and this shows um, pictorials on how things are made, pictures. Um, it has um, some formal paragraphs here explaining um, the detail behind it, which helps. But also has some very, very good formal drawing. Actually, this is in um, inches, an old um, unit of um, um, sizing. We use metric now, and as you know, metric is um, in millimetres. So one centimetre is 10 millimetres. So 100 um, millimetres is 10 centimetres, and so forth. And of course, a thousand millimetres is one metre. We all know that though, I'm sure. Um, so, you know, this book here we've been using, studying, because what we're hoping to do fairly soon is to be making um, some sort of lorry with Jake. Okay, so moving on. Um, we're going to use this design. And Jake's going to pan over here. And we're going to start the first stage and we're going to cut out the front of the boat. All right, right, moving forward, step one, we're gonna cut out the front as I say, and then I'll show the various other parts as we go through fairly quickly. So Jake's gonna just show you the bench hook. Bench hook could be used to cut this angle here, but you might find that really quite hard, especially if you've got small fingers, small hands. Start at a slight angle and work down. Take your time, not that easy. Okay, so start at an angle and then come down as you cut. All right. Alternatively, Jake, if you come over here, this is what I think some of the younger um, viewers should do. Mount your work holding it with a G clamp, and Jake will show you the G clamp there. There's a mini one there. No, it's a mini G clamp. Looks like a G, you see. And um, I would suggest. Now, I ought to just turn around, I can turn the chisel around, or turn the work round. And I'm going to now, if you come around here, Jake, put, put the chisel in there, get it nice and level. It's a cold winter's night in the shed today, hence I'm wearing a coat. There we go. Not perfect, but not bad. And then I can just chisel it nice and smooth. Get that one out there. You got that, Jake? Hi, Shed Hackers, moving on. So that's the boat we've cut out. And that's the piece we've still got to make. You can see the design. I always refer to the design. And I think if you do, you're going to have a successful project. And most things in life are designed very carefully. 
um, from all sorts of toys to construction of bridges, um, motor vehicles, all sorts of things that all have a design. If they don't, it will be a pretty shoddy product. Right, so um, that's the one we previously made. This is the one we're making today. And now we've got to make the funnel part, this part here. So I'm going to scrap piece of wood, mark off the lines. Okay, we're going to go full depth. I could get a tri-square and make a mark there. So Jake, if you just show me doing that there. Okay, so that's going to go in there. Uh, we've marked the middle by marking two diagonals. You can see straight across the corners. Lots of people still don't know how to find the middle. Yeah. Okay. And that will be where we drill. And it'll be a 15 millimeter hole using a forcing bit with the um, filler drill. And that will allow that to fit in there. The same as that well there. All right. Okay, let's get back to the pillar drill. Okay, this is the mini pillar drill. It's a pillar drill because it's like literally on a pillar and it's mini. <laughs> um, in some places, some um, uh, factories have much m larger machines. And that's a handheld version, of course, which often we'll be referring to. There's the chuck here. It's a, it's a chuck, a keyless chuck. It doesn't have um, a key used. In fact, you can see there's one chuck feeding another chuck, holding another one. So this is the safer type, I think. Uh, you put your drill bit in, or in this case, it's a forcing bit, 15 millimeter. And be careful, because it's got a sharp edge. And turn it clockwise till it's tight. You can turn it to make sure it's still, it is actually in the middle. Okay, it's quite safe to do that. It's not no power. Get hold of the top of the chuck and the bottom and almost twist it together. Okay, turning the bottom clockwise so the bottom is turned clockwise and twist it tight okay and check that's not going to come out all right then put your guard down make sure it's safe put your goggles on make sure you know what you're doing it's it's um the green button for um on and red for off so you know where things are and then you can turn it on and let's get drilling Don't push too hard, come out now and again to give it a breather and you're going about the same depth as the main part of the cutter. So we'll just turn it off, tap off. There's the main part of the cutter and we've gone just lower than that. And you can judge um, how far you've gone by just seeing how far that's disappeared. Now don't forget you can use other types of drills, um, the ones that you're most um, often use are probably are these more formal drills okay high speed steel drills and these can be used on metal and wood these are only designed for wood the forcing bits all right okay so uh, you know a little bit about this machine hopefully by now and make sure you've got the guard over um, it can be quite dangerous so anything that you may have long uh, like hair or, or long sleeves or you know uh, uh, perhaps a piece of clothing make sure it's tied back Okay, it's one person using that machine at a time. Okay, and using it obviously sensibly with a bit of common sense. Okay, I'll cut that off now using the bench hook and the tenon saw, and we'll come back to you on that in a moment. One more thing if you're cutting all the way through, make sure you use a sacrificial base. So if you go all the way through, it will just go into this wood and hopefully not damage the base or the drill bit. Yes. Or may even cause an accident. That's a good point actually. Um, if that touches the metal cast iron bed of the machine, it will damage that and could cause um, a hazard or some sort of danger. So yeah, the, use a bit of wood underneath. Often, certainly if you're going all the way through the wood, I wasn't then so I didn't need it. But if you're going all the way through, something underneath. Good point, Jake. Okay, we'll finish you off the cut there. In the bench hook, oh, that's quick, wasn't it? Excellent. Um, with the tenon saw, nice straight line. It's all very evenly done, and I've taken some time to get that right. And that's really important, guys. If you take your time and don't rush things, it will work out. If you start rushing in the first few minutes, I can assure you it will go wrong. So that fits in there nicely. We'll sand that now, and I'll show you a little bit of sanding safely 
done on the rotary sander. Before I do though, I will show you just one thing. You can put this into the vise. Turn the vise clockwise, obviously, for tightening. Get your block plate, hold it on the side, and it should be nice and sharp. Okay, that blade there should be nice and sharp. Ask your instructor if it's not, or an adult, to sharpen it. And you can plane off the sharp edges. Just plane them off, okay? Holding it nice and level. Don't rush again, take your time. Quality work, Shed Hackers, made in the shed. Okay, we'll come back to you in a sander. Okay, we're going to use the rotary sander. If you don't have one of these, it's good old glass paper. And glass paper, or sandpaper, is like that. And the grit, 150 grit per centimetre squared, I think it is. No, it could be per millimetre squared, maybe. You never can tell. Anyway, I'm sure somebody's better help me on that one. Um, if you use sandpaper, if you haven't got one of these, this is a rotary sander. Some people have a belt sander, but for heaven's sake, use that with an adult, because they can be really dangerous. Um, but this is a rotary disc sander, and we're going to sand it up. The suction here, it's called extraction, is turned on first. We then put goggles on. And your hair is tied back already. Uh, green for on, red for off. Green. Hold it level. Keep your fingers away. Keep it level. Hold it down on the bed there, hold it down. Don't rush it too much. Look at what you're doing, scrap wood, so, you know. Alright, and that's done with your sander. Okay, final part, so we sanded it up now, it looks really smart. The little holes, because we use scrap wood, and you can use that, and you can perhaps fill it with a little bit of dowel rod, something like that, and then a um, bit of glue. But, you know, it's, it is what it is. Um, the boat there is coming together, that should fit in. There, okay. I've cut the funnel, and the funnel, we've cut the hole already, and that can just be glued in with a little bit of wood. I've cut it at an angle, because often they are at an angle. And you could use the mallet, I suppose. Give that a tap. Tap in there, to the little boat. Okay. And then um, what you could do, just to finish it off, I suppose, if you just show it, show them there, I'm going to come towards you at an angle. Go, it, in fact, I should do this more precisely, shouldn't I, Shed Hackers? Make a little mark there for a flag hole. Hold your um, handheld power drill in this case, carefully. If you've got small hands, you may need a little bit of help on this one. Start off pretty slowly, and because I want an angle on the flag, because the flags often tilt out, start off slowly, go in slowly, and then go in at a slight angle. Don't go mad, you don't want to go all the way through. Be careful. You have some unusually poor accidents um, with some of these tools if you're not careful. Okay, and we're gonna we've cut a piece of six millimeter dowel. You can get this from most hobby shops, or even online, most of it. All very cheap. And that's beech wood, this is all pine wood. That looks like um, some, what do you think that is? Douglas fir. Douglas maybe. fir, it does look like Douglas fir. Another pine wood. Coniferous wood, a soft wood, sustainable wood, that's the thing. We can keep using these because the trees grow so quickly. Okay, so you can see we've we've made well we've shown you how to make uh that in certainly less than an hour um and it's a nice nicely presented piece of work i could sand that a little bit more i think it's a nice little piece of work actually well done uh, with your help jake um well do just scan at the design so there's the design and there's the boat it is what it is i hope I hope you enjoy this project. I think it's quite fun. Sunday afternoon when you get bored. Um, is there anything I've forgotten, Jake? Um, well, this is a bit of a safety tip, but when you're using the drill and you're going straight down and you want to drill a hole at an angle, 
always keep the drill running, but go uh, maybe slower than full speed. Yeah, okay. Lastly, I'm going to show you a little bit of sanding. Hold it down, sand along the grain where you can. The grain are the lines, that's how the, the tree grows. The tree would have grown vertically. Look, you see the annual rings of the tree there. Um, each ring indicates a year of growth, so I mean, that's a 10 year old tree or so. Um, anyway, interesting fact, isn't it? <laughs> Not really. Um, sand it all up. Doesn't take long to these things. Again, it's these little things that really make a difference, these projects. And um, I, I find that when people look at products like this, they can very quickly see if it's been made with some skill and care, as opposed to a project that's not been made with any skill or care or consideration. I think that's the word. To sign off. All those fluffy bits, get them all off. And spend time doing this. I'd expect... You know, at least 10 to 15 minutes, somebody's just sanding and making sure all the edges are neat. A lot of people um, I talk to, they comment on how to get the better uh, images and the quality product. And I often say just spend time on the sanding and then you can varnish this or even spray it with some lacquer, spray lacquer. And do that in a supervi supervised space if you're young because there's some of the sprays... Um, need to be in ventilated areas and so not that safe. So be careful what you do. I know, I know people that even use hairspray <laughs> and it will act like a lacquer. So we're going to pan on, there's the boat. Um, we're going to look at, just quick look at the um, tools used. So we use a tenon saw, pencil obviously and ruler. You showing this Jake? You missed me. <laughs> the two chisels, 10 mil and the 20 mil. Try square. You got the mallet, the pencil, ruler, tenon saw, the G clamp. You've got the mini one you can use for little jobs. If you crack it, you can glue it. Um, you've also got the plane, block plane. There are bigger ones like the um, smoothing plane there. Okay, much more expensive to buy. Keep them on their side, keep the blades sharp. And keep your adult who, who's helping you can help you do that. Bench hook, um, handheld drill, and we use the. I'll just show you this the force in a bit. Okay, really important. 15 millimeter. 15 mil. And I think obviously with your design here, guys, you may even use a template to mark out the hole diameters. There, then I'll use that one. Okay, with your design and a little bit of skill and care, that's the main thing. I think you'll have a really good project. Okay, goodbye Shed Hackers.